that. The, another phrase that the Stoics use, and you see this a lot in Epictetus, is using or responding to impressions in accordance with nature. Hmm. So in, that that's another key idea. This this notion of impressions, or sometimes they're they're translated in other ways. The Greek word is phantasiai, hmm. and it's a word that we get fantasy from. Um, so an impression is literally anything that presents itself to you, something that you think, something that you feel. Epictetus will actually say, and he's probably just reflecting sort of standard Stoic ideas here, that reason itself is a system, and he uses that word, systema, of mm. appearances. Impressions, appearances, those are two main ways of translating it. Another way that the Greeks um, use the word is to signify the imagination. And, mm. you know... A lot of what we do is, is I mean, you know this, when we see things, most of the time we're not actually taking in everything that, that the visual field is presenting to us. Yeah. And sometimes we see things that aren't actually there yeah. because we imagine them there. And we do the same thing with what we hear and what we, what we smell and, and the sense that we bring to it. So, you know, if I show up late and you're, you're prone to, I don't know, being kind of uh, – uh, irritated with people who are late, you know, you, mm. you could have the impression that I'm being a jerk to you, you know, yeah. that I, yeah. I wanted to delay the podcast or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so how do we deal with all of these, these things that are like all this information that's constantly flowing in at us, most of which is probably incorrect. Mm. <laughs> yeah. A lot, yeah. A lot of which is, is the result of our own projections or, people telling us something is is the case mm. so that's that's central to stoicism as well this notion of impression yeah don't and, believe and everything was, you see or hear or you know it's, yeah it's, you know yeah so so there's that that need to test it as they mm. say right you test out your impressions and you and you have to deal with them properly and one of the most important ways of responding to them is by um taking a pause just yeah. saying you're an impression i don't know if you're true or false i'm gonna like just, you know, think about this for a second before, instead of just responding the mm. way we typically do. Yeah. Um, no, there's there's probably some situations in which that would not be a good idea. Imagine mm -hmm. if you were, like, uh, playing a ball game with with some people. Um, you, you probably shouldn't think at every single moment, is, yeah. is this really a ball coming towards me yeah. that I need to catch? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, whatever, whatever game it happens to be, maybe you're tackling people, maybe you're, you know, throwing it or something like that. There's mm -hmm. a lot of situations in which it's okay to take things for granted. But the Stoics would say that when it comes to the things that tend to get us into trouble and make us unhappy, mm. then we, we want to, we want to develop this practice. So here's a case where like practice and theory go together, right? There's a theory of why you should take a pause and then mm. there's the practice of actually doing it. I mean, you, yeah. you you probably know as much as I do how hard it is to actually put that into practice when, say, you're mm. angry, yeah, right, yeah, or or hungry, yeah, uh, as another example, or well, I, um, pressed for time, yeah. You know? No, I I, th I think the um, the metaphor of the the ball game is actually something to to look at. I think that's really important because it, it's like if you threw a football at me, I'm yeah. telling you, I'm not going to catch it right. And I can't throw it properly either. I just can't. Right. I just, it's, it's, it's not a skill that I have naturally. Right. But, and not that, not that a lot of people have it naturally, but, but what yeah. I could do is practice it just in the same way that we practice rationality. And over time, the, uh, the, I say, I guess the chaotic part of my mind that has no idea what to do with that ball will soon become a naturally naturally responding yeah, yeah. part of my mind where I catch it perfectly, right? Just in the way that you see people practice music or practice anything. And I feel like it's the same with our rationality. It's like, at first, you're pretty damn clumsy and you mm -hmm. have no idea how to interpret things correctly or how to live in this world without just descending into chaos at everyone's comments or, you know, you look at your Twitter and all of a sudden you're in a rage, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. but over time you negotiate with your rationality and you say, well, maybe I don't trust that part of you, but I'll take that bit. And then over time you slowly take the chaotic part of your mind and turn it into order essentially through the process of practicing not believing what you at first see, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, 
That that is actually a good way of describing it, and it fits in well with something that Epictetus keeps keeps talking about. Seneca mm-hmm. talks about this, but maybe to a lesser extent. Um, Epictetus uses this word in Greek, mache, which which um, means conflict or battle or stuff like that. But but it gets translated in Stoic texts as contradiction, because mm-hmm. it was used in a kind of formal sense. And all of us are, you know, we get ourselves into trouble because we, we think that we're largely not a mess of contradictions mm. and that most of the people around us aren't as well. We're, we're all walking contradictions, just mm. bundles of stuff that doesn't actually work together and we shift from one to the other. So, you know, at this moment I love you and the next moment I hate you mm. and somehow both of those coexist at the same time. And Epictetus figures the stoic life as a way of progressively having less and less of those contradictions Mm, he he doesn't actually promise us that we won't have any yeah (laughs) yeah oh it's impossible Uh, yeah but 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 having fewer of them and having less damaging ones you know like so uh, here's here's an example right um (laughs) i i I wrote uh, a piece a while back about being a green bay packers fan and practicing stoicism at the same time and Mm. some people are like well any sort of fandom is inherently going to be out of sync with stoicism Mm -hmm. and i I think i provided an argument for how you could in fact be a sports fan in in a way that was at least consonant with stoicism Mm. for the most part but there's still going to be cases where so the, the packers got eliminated from you know the 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 um Super Bowl contention recently, and it'll be the 49ers playing instead because they, <laughs> they got as far as, as that, and then the 49ers just beat the crap out of them. Uh-huh. And and the Packers played okay, but the 49ers played much better. And, um, you know, in the past, like, there were other times when the Packers got eliminated, and it was due to a bad call by the referees, and then I would get mm. very angry. You know, I hated the Seahawks for a long time because of that. Mm-hmm. That that's not really that that's not compatible with with stoicism because mm-hmm. should these sporting events really matter? Um, no, they, they they should they should be seen as as sort of like Epictetus says: you go to a festival, have a good time, and then you you're done, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's not something that you should be emotionally invested in. in that's in it. A, a lasting way, right? Yeah. Um, now. That's but but being invested in being a Packers fan, which I'll probably always throughout mm. my life, that's much less of a problem, much less of a contradiction than say wanting to go beat people up, you know, because exactly. they yeah. take my parking spot, right? So yeah. there, you can talk about like almost like a hierarchy of yeah. how how screwed up are you? How many how how bad are your contradictions? Mm. Um, yeah. And, and freeing ourselves of them is, is a, a lifelong process. And then we oh, have contradictions it's, with other people, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I've, got to, I've got to say, like, w- one of the messages that I really want to often portray on this podcast is just because you're practicing stoicism doesn't mean <laughs> that you have to take all of the fun out of life. <laughs> like, yeah. you can be a fan of a sports team, right? You d- I, I, I really feel like that's that's one of those things that potentially turns a lot of people away from stoicism. It's this idea that 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 essentially no other way of well, I mean, you could even say that that's borderline bordering on the thought process that Masonius Rufus had of like a, the perfect stoic is a farmer or something like that. It's like, well, yeah. I, I mean, there are many good stoic people or people who at least practice stoicism, if you put it like that who are, you know, fans of sports teams or love a particular kind of music, but don't like the other kinds of music or, you know, it's, it's like, it, it, yeah, people, people get on me about that. Cause I'm a big, uh, classic metal head as well, you know, <laughs> and you know, metal does appeal to the, the, uh, emotions like, like anger, excitement mm. and stuff like that in non-rational ways. So yeah, 